When I'm not being told that this intro is performing better than 95% of my recent posts by Instagram and their lies, I like to answer questions I get on YouTube, so let's get to it. I really like drop D and also the double drop D on the high E to D as well. Remember that Zep did 10 years gone on drop D to secure your interest. So the other day I did a lesson on drop D and I wanna talk about double drop D, which I think is the superior tuning. So we're gonna do a couple examples. Actually, just one main example, you might know it. As just a great way of uh, talking about why I think double, double drop D is the superior alternate tuning, okay? So real quick, some of the pros and cons. Standard tuning is standard tuning. That's the biggest pro. Most things are in standard tuning. I think standard tuning is actually a, a quite brilliant way to just kind of make guitar such a multifaceted instrument that can play anything pretty easily in between keys, okay? The advantage of an open tuning is you get these big, chimey open chords. What that an open tuning is basically where you tune all your strings to where you just strum it, and that's going to be a chord. It could be a major chord, could be a minor chord, be a suspended chord, but basically just the open string set is a chord, and then you can play this other stuff in that key to kind of get like a big open chimey sound. Okay. The downside is all the shapes and familiarity you have with standard tuning is just out the window. It's just gone. Okay. So standard tuning is great. Uh, it's a great way to learn. You learn your shapes. It just kind of makes you a better musician or, you know, a musician of whatever you're playing in standard tuning. But you miss out on a lot of those open, big sounding things unless you're playing in like the key of A, some other keys and stuff. Open tunings are great, but all the stuff you've learned goes out the window. You have to use your ears and you get chimey stuff that you can learn in pretty much one key. Double drop D is where it's at. Okay, so what that means is the low... Lowest string and the highest string are both tuned to a D, so a step down, because usually they're E, all right? So the thing about drop D is you can kind of make these, these power chord type things that just make the lower chuggier sounds of the guitar just that much easier to do. You can do a lot more with that. But when it comes to like the openness of everything, that high E string, is, so the strings would be D, A, D, G, B, E, okay? So it's essentially just like standard tuning, where instead of having the low E and the high E and then a D in there, we have different notes, right? We have five different notes, E, A, D, G, B, and then E is repeated. In drop D, it's essentially the same thing, but the D is repeated. So it's really kind of the same thing. The pros and cons are the same. But double drop D, we take that E out of there. So it's half of the strings are just a D note, okay? So if we play a D major chord, Lose your middle finger, so it'd be like a D suspended chord. You get the open chiminess of an open tuning, but it's not so far removed that all the shapes that you know are still gonna work, okay? What I mean by just like hand shapes and stuff, anything you can do with like a D major chord. Just think of D's all over the place, as so many people love to do. This is an Elliott Smith song called Satellite. I think it's the perfect song to use this as an example because it's it sounds cool because you can do a very easy rake. Okay, like I said, so it's a D sus2 chord, essentially. So just third fret on the B string, second fret on the G string. Hit that low D note, and then just rake your pick down the strings, or your fingers, however you want to play it, okay? One. Then what we can do is we can start thinking of like, all right, well, this high E string, which usually I have the full traditional D major chord right here. You can still use that. Okay, so we're gonna go through the D major scale. There's open D, whole, whole, half, right? So open two, four are in that key. So we can... Okay, so we're getting the best of both worlds. We're getting traditional shapes that you're familiar with, but we're also getting the open chimey sound afforded with open chords, okay? And then, uh, this, this is such a great song. You might even you might even be able to know what listening homework's gonna be on this one. You can still use like a, like a D7 shape. Ascending lines, the 8th fret, to the 7th fret, to the 
riffraff back to home. Okay, so if you guys are interested, maybe I could do like a satellite cover with one of the girls or maybe even myself or whatever. But uh, that's honestly, that right there is the whole song, Elliot Smith Satellite. Not one of my traditional favorite Elliot Smith songs, just because it's called Satellite, and I feel like every great songwriter needs to have a song about a satellite or a song about a bird. <laughs> Those are like the two things that no great songwriter can leave alone. So me as a famous hater contrarian, I never really loved that song until I really kind of dove into the guitar thing. It's like, wow, that's, that's such a beautiful, shiny, open... So good. Double drop D. It's easy to do. It takes less time than a traditional open tuning. If you want to get back into standard, two pops of the tuners and you're good to go. The superior tuning. Fight me. I get that your hair is real, but why is your head so big relative to your torso? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Is my head big relative to my torso? I guess I can't really say. Maybe I should do like a poll on that. What do the people at home think? <laughs> Love the brunch rant, OMG. So if you missed it, I did a community post where uh, I was interviewed by Joey from Journey Guitars. Great company, Joey's the man. And he did like an overrated, underrated thing with me. And I think it actually turned out really well. The editing is on fire. I'll link you guys if you're interested because my thoughts on if brunch is overrated or underrated uh, should probably be heard by the masses. And I definitely went on a pretty good rant, so check that out if you're interested. I've been watching your videos lately. I was hoping if you can suggest in what order should I watch all your videos, trying to learn glimpses of jazz chords. Thank you. So that's the problem with YouTube, is like I never made these videos uh, with any kind of order in mind. That's why they're all just kind of concepts. And you know, sometimes they're more beginner, sometimes they're intermediate, sometimes they're more advanced. But that's the exact reason why I made the Patreon, because I just basically retaught everything from the ground up. There's like a hundred lessons on there and it's super cheap. It's like 12 bucks a month. It's definitely worth it, $12, just to find out where you are. If it helps, you just cancel it after one month. So check that out. Uh, like I said, because there's really no good way for me to organize the, the lessons that I already have on YouTube. So Patreon is where it's at. This is more of a Chicago blues bass player lesson. The blues has existed for longer than the Chicago variant. It used to have two variants, just in Mississippi, blah, 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 blah. That is insulting to the blues itself. The Chicago blues variant. Can we agree that in COVID times, just don't call anything a variant, especially if it's some nonsense on the Chicago blues variant. As the blues keeps evolving, we can't keep up with it. So for listening homework, obviously I'm going to throw you to my man, Elliot Smith, Satellite. Just great song. Love it. Uh, double drop D for the win. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, the website. You can figure out how to find me. Not hard to find. Anyways, uh, I'll talk to you soon. Later.